Hello, everyone. Yes, thank you for the introduction. I'm Stuart, and I am the CEO and co-founder of Scale Robotics. And it is a pleasure to be here today to share with you a little bit about how we see the industry, our impact upon the industry, and how our clients are leveraging data to be able to make better decisions. We have an industry that is producing a product that we need to drive our economies and sustain our entire way of life. And it has powerful forces that are acting upon it. Margins are getting thinner. Cost overruns add that extra bit of risk. Material prices are going up. And clients are demanding things that are faster, cheaper, better quality. And at the same time, competition is fierce to be able to win work. This all seems like a lot, doesn't it? But within each of these constraints is an opportunity to differentiate, win work, and become more profitable. At Scaled, we try and see the industry through a simple lens. The people working in construction are industrious, creative, and given the better information at the right time to be able to make better decisions, they can radically change the way that we deliver built assets. So let's start with a really simple question. How do you know that everything has been built objectively correct on your project? The answer is that you probably don't. We use five 10% spot checks to verify work with expensive surveyors. We send site managers around the project to visually verify all the work that's been done. But really, that's not capturing the entirety of the project. So it's actually impossible to be able to gather all that information. But it's not that we don't want it. Of course, we want all that information. It's just not feasible. Cost, uh, it's cost prohibitive, or we just don't have the resources to be able to do it, which means that you're leaving around 90% of the project open to risk. So it's no surprise that then, let's say, 5%, 10% of project budget is actually allocated to all of that risk. We are over-ordering materials. We're adding extra time into schedules. We're using labor in inefficient ways. Why? Because of uncertainty. Because we don't really have a good understanding of how our projects are working. We have an approximate view based on the experience of actually a very small number of people on our projects. But enough talk. How are we going about solving that problem? We are capturing data on construction sites using devices like the BOK to go, which is really as easy as just walking around this device in your hand. You don't need costly surveyors to be able to capture all that information. Walk around, capture that high quality data, upload all of that to the cloud, and then what you have is raw data that our computer vision and machine learning algorithms then go to work on. This is a project in the Middle East. You wouldn't normally see this as a client, but it's just to show you the size and complexity of the data sets that we're working with. So everything that's just turned red is not the building. So we filter out all of that clutter, all of that noise, all of that chaos automatically. So you've got good data coming into the system to get good data coming out. But still, all you have at that point is raw data. It's not useful. So we take that and we turn it into actionable information that you can then use to make better decisions on. So we take every element in the BIM and we automatically classify it. So gray means no data, not enough information to make an assessment. Uh, green is verified. That means it's within tolerance. That's obviously that's good. Um, red is missing, so that means that it hasn't been installed. That's not necessarily a problem. That really depends on context. And then orange is out of tolerance and has not been built correctly. And then that lighter yellow color is under construction, which means that it's halfway between being built and not being built. This means that we can immediately flag up risks on your project. Here, there's a penetration, there's a block out, it's missing. I can immediately see that it is, in fact, actually missing. Here, lift shaft is telling me it's deviated, it's been flagged up. I can visualize that deviation in two seconds, and I can see that the lift shaft doors are the wrong size. They're missing material on the top. That's obviously a problem. Get out ahead of that. Here, this steel column, it's missing. That's, uh, that's obviously not great as we're moving the project forward. And in literally seconds, I can flag all those risks up to the guys on site who are then able to make better decisions with that information, all hosted in a web viewer to be able to get access to that. 
Let's look at that on a real project. Uh, UOB, which is the University of Birmingham by Morgan Sindel in the UK, this is an ongoing project. They had a client requirement where they had to validate 100% of elements that were installed to 50 millimeters. I don't know what that is in inches, but 50 millimeters. How do you do that? How do you validate 100% of what's been installed? It's not possible. So we sat down with Morgan Sindel, and we built out a workflow to be able to do that. Super simple, nothing crazy. Authoring tools are Revit, so you grab all that information, push it into ACC. That model is then grabbed by our platform, pull that into our platform. Site data is captured by whoever's walking around with the BLK to go. Capture that, upload it to the platform. We automate the entire process and we deliver that back to you as actionable information. You make decisions, highlight and surface that risk, create issues. So when you do find a problem, you create an issue, put that into whatever issue ticketing service you're using. Report so you can send that information to whichever C-level executive wants to be able to see that. And then you can download that raw data if you actually want to. And then to streamline the process of then updating the BIM so that you can increase the coordination, you can actually just stream the individual point cloud for every single element directly back into Revit to be able to then update the BIM in a more surgical way. You're not searching for everything, you're just doing that in a far more surgical way. The advantages here is that you now no longer squander your BIM manager resources. They're being focused onto where the value actually is and they're not being utilized to be able to hunt for issues. They're being used to solve issues, which is what they should really be doing in the first place. Less RFIs, increased coordination because everyone now knows what's been installed versus what hasn't, so you can make better decisions. You know that this has been installed, so here I have the opportunity to do a redesign, and here I don't have the opportunity to do a redesign, and I have to actually do some rework. But at least when there is remedial work taken, it's done with more information to make more educated decisions. Less client frustration, because they know what's going on, they know how the project is working. You can get out ahead of those problems, better communication, and it prevents those second and third order events slipping into your schedule, because you have more control over those critical variables. We do recognize that we do not operate in a vacuum. We're not solving all your problems. We are just one portion of this ecosystem, and we're a platform that opens itself up to all of those inputs. So model data should live in ACC. Laser scan data, hey, that should come from Leica, that should come from Cyclone. We just take all the information that is already available, we process it, and then we deliver it back to you as an additional level of information. We're leveraging the investment that you have already made in these platforms and to gather all this information. Now imagine we take what we learned on a $50 million project and we apply it to a $1.5 billion mega project. Again, we're taking weekly data, scanning, capturing, uploading, processing, and delivering back to teams, but on just a, an order of magnitude scale. On, this is from last week, actually. So just on the steel structure alone, just one job, we processed 38,000 elements just for that one portion of steel on the project. We estimated that if, if you were to get the same outcome that we were automating, this would have taken 263 days for their BIM team to be able to accomplish. We managed to turn around that same data in two days. That is an order of magnitude change in the information that you're getting to be able to manage that project. This is a big deal. Just in terms of concrete ROI, this is from a different but similar size project. Within one month, we quantified that we caught 94 critical deviations on that project and saved them approximately $1.5 million within one month, just by providing better information to make better decisions. When things do go off plan, and it does happen, it takes forever to actually get that information back to the people that need to make those decisions. So management teams are learning about all of this late. The longer an issue remains undiscovered, the more money it's gonna cost you. It's really that simple. The earlier you can surface that risk, the more options you have on the table to be able to resolve it, and the less money it's gonna cost you in the long run. 
But to be able to do that, you need automation. So here are some examples. You start with 38,000 elements. We start to filter, search, narrow down the search space to get to where we want to go. That's gone down to 16,000. We now say, only show me elements above 30 millimeters, of 30 millimeters of deviation. That's now gone down to the 28 elements that have been installed within that range. This is what we actually want to focus our attention on. Everything is automatically ranked by the magnitude of deviation. So I can click on the top. That is 473 millimeters out of place. I bring up a section which is automatically generated, and I can measure that out. Immediately, I have caught an issue that is putting my project at risk. I can pick another issue. Every single element is automatically tagged with every 360 image it appears in. I don't have to go searching for that data. And then I can actually highlight that along with a heat map in the browser. And I can toggle um, that image tagging on and off on the right-hand side, where you can actually then see in the image exactly the beam that you're supposed to be looking at. You would not be able to find these issues without automation to be able to surface this risk. And this means that ultimately, you can leverage your most valuable resource, which was brought up earlier. BIM managers and VDC managers do not grow on trees. You should be using them in their best capacity. You should be squeezing the most value out of their time, because you will not be able to recruit more of them. There is a skills shortage. So get them to be focused on where the value actually is on your project. And I would also like to point out that I think all the success that we've seen on the projects that we've just seen have really not necessarily just come from the technology. It's come from the people and the professionals on those projects figuring out how to deploy this technology to squeeze out the most value. Let's take a moment to maybe just look into the future a little bit and see where some of this is going. At this point in time, projects are executed on the collective brain power of really just a small portion of your project team. Handful of consultants, project team members, and it is the aggregation of millions of decisions over time to build out those projects. But at the moment, there is no quick and easy way to transfer knowledge between projects or through an organization. So as a result, we get repeated errors, mistakes, and all of this surfaces itself manifests itself as rework, extra costs, and delays. But what if we could take the learning from a single project and apply it seamlessly to all the other projects that we're running? What if we could take the learning from 100 projects and apply that to all the projects that are ongoing to aggregate that insight across all of the projects or use that knowledge to be able to proactively predict outcomes on projects that haven't even started to be able to de-risk them before they even start. Using data to create insight, improving decision quality, providing better information to make better decisions on project delivery. This is fundamentally changing the way that we deliver assets, protecting margins, making the industry more financially stable, and making the industry more predictable. Just to wrap up really quickly, I think this is how we see the world at the moment. We just see from our own kind of narrow perspective, we can see fragments of rocks on the ground. We can just see a little bit of the world. But when we get a new perspective and we see everything from a different perspective, so now we see it from the sky instead of the ground, we can see that all of those fragments of rocks on the ground were actually this huge bird in the middle of the desert. And if we apply this thinking to construction, at the moment, we're just looking at things through a very narrow vision of our own experience. But if we can see this from a different perspective through some of the tools that we just showed you, this gives you the opportunity to gather a new perspective, to be able to make better decisions with better data, to be able to de-risk project delivery, and keep things running smoothly. Really, thank you very much for your time. It's been an absolute pleasure. And uh, yeah, thank you very much.